What up techies? Billionaires in space. It's a headline that would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. But it's fast becoming a reality. Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos were the first two billionaires to book a trip to space. And they're not the only ones with their sights set on the stars. Private companies are now actively participating in the space race. And this abrupt shift is changing the trajectory of space exploration. But what exactly caused this sudden interest in space travel? And what does it mean for the future of our species? There are many possible explanations for this sudden shift. Firstly, as technology advances, space travel is becoming more and more feasible for everyday people. Secondly, with private companies getting involved, more investment and resources are being funneled into space exploration. And lastly, there's a growing sense of urgency to find new homes beyond Earth. With the future of our planet uncertain, many people are looking to the stars as a way to ensure the survival of our species. In 1962, just five years after the USSR launched the first artificial satellite, the first commercial satellite, Telstar 1, was launched to broadcast American television programs to Europe. It was launched using a NASA rocket, this momentous event demonstrated the potential for commercialized space travel and the growing Cold War tensions between the US and USSR. In 1975, ORTRAG, the first company to attempt to develop an alternative propulsion system for rockets, was founded in Stuttgart, Germany. This was followed nine years later by US President Ronald Reagan's signing of the Commercial Space Launch Act which encourage companies to get involved in exploring space. They mark a tipping point in space travel and the start of a new industry in which the wealthy can pay to spend time in space. As we'll see in a bit, the ramifications of this could be far-reaching in the future. Let's start by checking out the businesses working on their space rockets. We will focus on Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, and SpaceX in particular because their unique approaches provide the clearest windows into the varied futures that commercial space travel could usher in. Let's start with Virgin Galactic because Richard Branson beat out the other billionaires to become the first person to launch a rocket into space. He did this on July 11, 2021, but he founded Virgin Galactic in 2004. Branson's Virgin Group was interested in space tourism, and they had heard that a different company, Scaled Composites, was working on their rocket, also known as Spaceship One. Scaled Composites' first private crewed spacecraft is aimed at competing for the Ansari X Prize. To ensure the company's continued success, Branson contacted Scaled Composites and persuaded them to make the Virgin Group their exclusive customer for future spacecraft. On October 4, 2004, they successfully sent Spaceship One on a mission to 112 kilometers in altitude and back to Earth with a crew. It's important to note that many organizations consider the Kármán line, named after Theodore von Kármán, the first person to try to define such a boundary to mark the beginning of space. The Kármán line was crossed successfully by Spaceship One. As for NASA, they consider a distance of 80 kilometers to be the threshold of space. After that, Scale Composites and Virgin Galactic began collaborating to build a whole fleet of new spaceships, codenamed Spaceship Two, with Scale Composites providing the technical know-how and Virgin Galactic providing the initial capital. They established the spaceship company jointly, with Virgin initially holding 70% of the stock and later acquiring all of it. The team's rocket was built with one thing in mind. This is to take tourists into space. It carries six paying customers and two crew members into space, where they can take in breathtaking panoramas of our planet and feel what it's like to float effortlessly in the vacuum of space. They employed a novel strategy to achieve this result. To get their spaceship to, to an altitude of 15 feet, they didn't just build a rocket but rather attached it to a specialized plane called the White Knight 2. After being set free, the spacecraft fires up its rocket booster and reaches the speed of sound in just 8 seconds. After that, the spaceship 2 begins to ascend, arcing higher and higher until it points directly upward. The entire ascent takes about an hour. The spaceship 2 turns off its thrusters at the peak of its ascent, allowing gravity to begin reducing its acceleration. Passengers report a sensation of weightlessness as the ship slows to a stop, much like when a ball is thrown straight up into the air, and, for a split second, neither rises nor falls. This point of zero net upward acceleration relative to Earth's gravity lasts for about five minutes before the spaceship 2 starts to fall. Using a feathered re-entry system, it descends much more slowly than a re-entering capsule and returns to the launch pad. This additional hour would bring the total travel time to two hours. Based on Richard Branson's success in space, Virgin Galactic plans to begin space tourism this year. What's the big deal though? It's unlikely that most people will be able to afford the $250,000 required to take a trip on a spaceship too. As our next billionaire has pointed out, 
space tourism might just be how space travel becomes accessible to everyone. With this goal in mind, Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, established Blue Origin, his own space company. At 18, Bezos expressed a desire to build space hotels, amusement parks, and colonies for 2 million or 3 million people who would be in orbit in an interview, demonstrating a lifelong fascination with space travel. This wasn't done, though, to make a buck. Bezos stated at the time that this was an effort to save the Earth, as depopulating the planet would relieve pressure on the planet's ecosystem. Blue Origin was founded in 2000 by Jeff Bezos, who used his fortune from Amazon's success to fund the company privately. But initially, Bezos kept the project's existence relatively under wraps. Although he began purchasing land in 2003 for what may have been a launch site, he never told the public that he was the company's founder. For the better part of a decade, Blue Origin kept its plans under wraps while its competitor, Virgin Galactic, which relied on investors to fund its research, was very public about its intentions. It began working with NASA in 2009 and, by 2011, had published a preliminary report on the development of the rocket it was working on. However, it wasn't until 2015 that it became more forthcoming about its aims. Bezos's early aspirations remained largely unchanged throughout his life. Blue Origin's first commercial rocket, the New Shepard, named after Alan Shepard, the first American to go to space, was designed as a tourist rocket. But Bezos has made it clear in speeches that he has no plans to stop there. For him, this was the first step. In a public speech he gave in 2016, he drew parallels between the state of the space industry in 2016 and the early days of aviation. In the early days of aviation, many passengers flew for the excitement of experiencing flight for the first time. Because of the positive impact on tourism and entertainment, the industry saw a surge in investment and innovation. It's easy for the average person to get their hands on an airplane ticket these days. Bezos has predicted that the space industry could follow the airline business into the red in the long run, despite the fact that spacecraft tickets are extremely expensive compared to Branson's rocket. Bezos's, called the New Shepard, is slightly different in appearance. A standard thruster lifts an attachable observation pod into the air, where it then floats away. It exceeds Spaceship 2's altitude by about 107 kilometers, and thus passes the Kármán line. Additionally, its speed is considerably higher. The entire experience, from takeoff to landing, will only take about 11 minutes, compared to two hours on Virgin Galactic, though tickets will likely cost the same. This is consistent with Bezos's goals, so it's all good to make commercial spaceflight easier to achieve. Bezos has predicted that much of Earth's heavy industry will one day be done in space, but he doesn't think it will happen in his lifetime. Our last billionaire, however, has eyes on an even greater goal. Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, is slightly different from the other two. SpaceX's focus has been on commercial endeavors, as opposed to space tourism like that of Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin. Since SpaceX was founded in 2002, it has grown to become the industry leader, winning about half of all contracts to launch satellites into orbit. The fact that the company's rocket, the Falcon 9, can be used more than once is a big factor in its success in this market. This reusability drastically reduces the cost of launches, making launching satellites and other cargo much cheaper. Compared to the New Shepard and Spaceship 2, the Falcon 9 is enormous. The other two are considerably shorter than Falcon 9, at only 18 meters. It can reach orbit with the help of its powerful thrusters. It carries a reusable cargo capsule, named the Dragon, the first of which carried supplies to the International Space Station. The Falcon 9 can carry five, 500 kilograms of weight into orbit or more if they're willing to sacrifice the rocket's reusability. This ability to transport cargo reflects a possible future purpose of SpaceX to carry freight to Mars. Elon Musk has made it clear that he wants to see a Martian colony established one day, and in 2001, his company imagined greenhouses that could be used to grow food on the red planet. Any such colony will no doubt need supplies from the Earth particularly in its early days, as vital equipment and personnel will need to be transported. Any business with the capacity to ship massive cargo between Earth and Mars would be in a prime position to profit. In 2001, Musk looked into purchasing rockets to kick off the process of sending supplies to Mars, but he quickly realized that building his own would be much more cost-effective. Thanks to the success of SpaceX, which is valued at $74 billion, Musk has gained the funds necessary to further this dream. SpaceX is working on a new rocket series called Starship, which they hope will initially be able to transport 100 tons to Mars, refuel there, and then return to the moon. The billionaire's interest in space travel is more than just a whim. 
It's a sign of future things, with private companies getting involved. The cost of space travel is dropping dramatically, and soon enough, going to space will be as commonplace as taking a vacation. This new era of space exploration is exciting and fraught with possibilities. We can't wait to see what comes next. What do you think about the billionaire's interest in space travel? Do you think it will positively or negatively impact our species? Let us know in the comments below.